Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet FPL, the world where everything revolves around fantasy Premier League. My name is Serge. And my name is James. Episode two of Correspondent Week, James. Why don't you introduce our correspondent? Climbing the mountain slowly, um, as his team might this year. Uh, let me introduce you to our Wolverhampton Wanderers correspondent, Bradley Parker. How are you, Bradley? I'm good, James. Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks, mate. Are you. Actually, we should... let, let, let's go backwards. Fuck it. It's Wolves Tottenham. Let's just cut Sidge off for a minute. <laughs> so this time last year was a lot of Matt Do- Doherty beef between the two of us. Doherty. No, yeah, not manager beef. Yeah, that, let's not start a how to pronounce Matt Doherty gig. Um, you can have him back if you want, by the way. Mate. <laughs> um, Nuno, I know you loved him to pieces, mate. So how do you? How did you feel originally once the announcement came uh, at the end of the season? When I first heard it, I was quite surprised about it. But when I thought more about it, I'm surprised I didn't see it coming, to be honest. Why? Wait. Because I think when I've been on the pod last season before, I spoke about it, he seems to have lost the spark in him. And I think some of the comments afterwards, and we found out like through some reports that he nearly got sacked after the West Brom defeat at home. Okay. But the, but the board thought it'd be better to keep him on just in case he did end up like needing to survive. And that's because when we lost that match, I did think he might have got sacked at that moment. So I felt like the Mick McCarthy vibes. Do you remember? Five do you remember? So a couple of days before it come out, I'd said on the pod, uh, we was in the studio, and I said to you, mm. I wouldn't be surprised if it got announced any yep. day yep. that he's yep. going. I got ripped apart for that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, he would become quite um, synonymous with Wolves, especially obviously with the time in the Premier League, and I think even fans of other clubs. Like, I, I, I thought Nuno was uh, a likeable manager. He came across quite passionate. He came across as like a manager that the players would get behind. Um, apart from his regular weekly, we have some issues in press conferences. He, he seemed like quite friendly in press conferences and stuff. He came, came across quite well. So um, I can understand why um, some fans would have been sad that he was leaving. But the last season, it did feel a little bit like... Um, that spark, as you said, Bradley, to be fair, had gone. Um, yeah. And it is hard to keep reinventing yourself season after season after season. Yeah, he seemed to get like stuck in a... He tries to change the system, but we don't find the players to actually play the system, which I thought was bizarre. It, it didn't so help, though. The, the, the game he changed the system, your best player got injured. Mm. Yeah. Didn't help, and obviously... Yeah, Bradley I mean... Players. Take take a a Jimenez type out of any team in the Premier League, and they're going to find it harder than than obviously with a fifteen twenty goal a season striker in there. Especially and, when the backup's only a child. Brief question: I'm not going to ch- turn this into a Tottenham podcast, but do you think it's a good appointment for us? Uh, depends what your aim is. Uh, to definitely to finish above you for a start. But <laughs> <laughs> well, he should do that anyway. But mm, I think it'd be interesting. I'm going to be interested to see what system he plays because he's safety first. I'd be surprised if he changed from safety first. All right, we'll save that for Ricky Saunders' pod a bit later in the week. Uh, what can you tell us about the the new man? It's uh, no more Nuno, now it's Bruno. Bruno Large, what can you tell us about him, mate? He uh, likes to play a pressing system. The first couple of friendlies we've played, we've, dem- we've clearly been trying to play higher up the pitch. More four four two or four two two two. Uh, two depending two, two. on the players, yeah. but yeah, mm. thinking harder. It's a this. Uh, I think we look a bit vulnerable, especially at the minute on the break. The last friendly we played against Las Palmas, we got done so easy by losing the ball in the stupid area, and they were just in on goal straight away because of how high our fullback was up the pitch. So they'll have to sort that out for the Premier League because they're going to get ripped an asshole. The first impression I'm getting, and I've not seen any of your friendlies other than the odd goal or something, um, what I'm reading and what I'm hearing is forget everything that you know about Wolves, basically yeah, what you've learned the last few years. Forget it. Completely yeah. forget it. Write it. New, clean slate, brand new system, basically, with obviously some new players coming in as well. So I, I think people are, are still going to get potentially stuck in their minds of, Oh yeah, Cody's cheap and defensively sound and whatnots. And the murmurs I'm hearing, I heard exactly that as well. That you'll get done on the counter attack because the two wide players want to come off the flank, go centrally, and make it from a four four two to like a four two two two. Two. 
<laughs> and the fullbacks <laughs> and the fullbacks obviously want to go really high, and you yeah. get exposed if you lose the ball in certain areas. Big time. So that like, you agree with that? That's how it sounds. Yeah, because like the left back was Mark Cal the last match. He's got no pace really. So made I've got the pace to recover, but the centre half only one really has any pace because we need. I think everybody knows who follows me. I've been tweeting for literally a whole year. You know all those memes of all the women saying, "What do you want?" So I <laughs> me just commented, "A dominant centre back." Mm. Have you not bought one? Centre-back. No, we've got we've signed Mosquera. Well, this is the lad I want to ask you about. Yeah, yeah, he looks a player. I've got to talk about him. So is he not the dominant centre back then? No, he's dominant, but he's young. We need we need another centre half experience player because Willie Bolly just seems to break down now. I'm if he's got injured again, so can't rely on his fitness. If if I look at it on paper, go, you got Bolly, Saïs, Cody. Kilman did all right when he played last year. And you bought Mascara. That's five centre backs. And you're going to play a back four. It's going to be very difficult to go and buy another one unless you get rid of someone, mate. Mm. Safe, possibly. But I don't know what he's going to do with Cody yet because will he see him as a centre back in that system where he's probably going to want an athletic one? If we're going to press high, it's going to be a few chase backs. He brings Cody's you... not fast. No, I get that. But he brings you brilliant leadership qualities, doesn't he? You know That's that. the thing with Cody. Mm. I think he'll be in the team one way or another. And size maybe gives you a little bit of cover on the left side as well, if if you need it. Good. But do you yeah. need it on the left side? Uh, I'll be open to selling size probably, and use mm. Kilman as that cover for the left. Right. Everyone's going mad about eight Nori Bradley because he's been playing left wing oh, in the friendlies. Yeah, um, that... Again, we should clarify we're pre-recording this on the on Wednesday the twenty eighth. But um, I think you've got a game at the weekend as well. But ahead of that, he's been playing the games left wing, and everybody's getting very excited about that. Four point five. Yeah, I don't know why. Go on, then elaborate on that, mate. Yeah, uh, Troy Ray's just back in training today, so let's say he doesn't leave. Hodens is probably going to be back by then as well. He's going to play Trinko and a Triore, surely, because he's wide players from the start. With Neto all available. I can't. And I think even even if he played left wing at the start of the season, it's not a very appealing thing to me to have him there, even as an option in FBL. Well, I think part of the thinking is, I was going to hold this back a little bit, but sorry, we might as well get into it now. You've obviously got a difficult start. Leicester away, Tottenham at home, Manchester United at home. Is a, as a group of three, is a difficult set of fixtures mm-hmm. for anybody. Game week four to game week 14 is phenomenal. And it starts with Watford, Brentford, Southampton, Newcastle. Those That that could be the bottom four this year. So not only is it a great, brilliant run, it starts good. And the end of the run is Crystal Palace, some shit called West Ham, Norwich and Burnley. Where well, you finish in the league, James? Yeah, all right, mate. Okay. Above Wolves, just. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the games I've missed out in the middle there is Villa Leeds Everton. That, I mean, that is a phenomenal run of 11 fixtures. And I think the thinking is with someone like Eight Nori, well, even if he's not going to play left wing, he might play left back. He's 4.5. I don't need to start with him. I've got the Wolves player ready for that game game week four to game week 14. Do you think, I know you're saying you don't think he'll stay left wing. No. Do you Do you see him as the first choice left back? Or is that difficult to gauge because he hasn't been playing now? Uh. My personal choice, he would be, but it's not concrete because Mark Hell's actually available at the moment. But you can never made you a straw, never, you never say, know, mate, or made a crisp biscuits, biscuits, biscuits. Okay, pop it on pudding and biscuits, Mark Hell. <laughs> we don't know when he'll break down. I'm surprised he's played this many games in a row. Might be a record for him from the top I, of my head. I would just think if part of the, the idea behind the system is for the fullbacks yeah, to really push good. on, and that's not Saiz or Marcao, is it? It's ain't Nori. Yeah. That would be my thinking. That's mine as well. But then I'm also surprised that he's, he's not put a, a young player in to play left wing in these friendlies and gone, well, I need to have a look at both of these guys at, at left back. So, I think the one is the one, Corbiano, who would have been that guy. He's with Canada in the Gold Cup. Okay. So I think there's a gap missing there because it would have been Corby Arne, who's probably one of the better under 23 players. And he probably doesn't help as a new manager as well. He's probably got less knowledge of who the kids are and uh, 
Yeah, okay, that that's fair. You think Eight Nori probably starts left back game week one then? Yeah, I'd imagine so. If he really wants to play that football, he's gonna need him to play Eight Nori. Samedo too expensive at five? Uh yeah, that's, I'd that's more secure. It. It's probably the most secure of all the defensive ones, though, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. He's a most secure player. Did you feel like he improved towards the end of the season? He did the second half of the season. Yeah, I thought he did surprising. a bit. He's actually more top tackler in the defence, which was surprising. Just the okay. ball's over the top of his head for some reason. He can't seem to get the angle of that. But his recovery pace gets him out of the trouble. A bit like Carl Walker in that way. So do you see... Mascara start in the season, or do you think it's not ready yet? On what you've seen, and that's difficult so far. Uh, to be honest, I'd probably start him. Really? Yeah, I was with, very impressed with Cody. Very impressed. Yeah, if Bolly's not available, is he quick, Mascara? I don't know anything about. Yeah, him. he's quick. Well, there you go. Quick. That's your cover for Cody, very, there, isn't it? He's very, he's very aggressive as well, in a good way. Yeah, he's I've, re- I, I, I've, I've not pressure. seen any of him play, but I've read good things about him. How yeah, much should you pay for him? About four million. Oh, bargain in today's market, isn't it? Like it a pump of doms or biscuits, whatever you said, isn't it? It's <laughs> it all it is in oh, both. Time, isn't it? Mm. And behind that, you've got a new goalkeeper. Um, mm. I was never a huge Rui Patricio fan, I have to say. Um, would you make a new man, Saar, who's in from Olympiacos? Uh, from what I've read from Portuguese people and the Olympiacos fans, he said like he'll be a decent goalie. He's more, he says he's more commanding than Patricio. Who I did think got stuck on his line a lot. And he's a bit better with the ball at his feet. I just felt Patricio really struggled with low shots near his body. Yeah, I know. I don't know, but even for Portugal at the Euro, didn't he? There's a goal that Hungary, Hungary scored. He's lucky he was offside because Hungary would have gone 1-0. Up. That's right, Might correct, yeah. Um, yeah. Has he not joined you then yet, Sar? Yeah, yeah. He played uh, the last match from the start. It's just well, not it's also, common. Though. I mean, a new goalkeeper coming in at five million. I guess they've probably taken the view that well, we would have priced Patricio at five million in FPL. We'll just give Saar five million, but it's probably too expensive for a new goalkeeper coming into the team. And obviously, what you've mentioned about you guys getting caught on the counter doesn't fill me with um, the most kind of yeah, I'd want to look there anyway. And the thing that Wolves have compared to some other teams is that the difference between your cheaper players and your most expensive player isn't as big as some. So when I look at that run that James mentioned from game week four to 14, sometimes you can't afford to go for the most expensive player in the team. And you think, okay, well, who's like going to cover me off or give me some balance? And I can see why Nori at 4.5 would do that. But with Wolves, you can just go to Jimenez if you wanted to, or if Trey or is playing at 6 million, because the difference just isn't there. And I don't know what you guys think, but I'd always in that situation want to just go for the best player I can get if I can afford it um, from Wolves. And there's obviously a clear standout in that as well. Yeah, who is it? Raul, obviously. How's he looking, Bradley? Let's jump the midfield for a minute. How's he looking? Sharp. Quite surprisingly sharp, to be honest. I think he'll have a good season. He has, he's had no problems going for the headers or anything like that. He looks I'm, the same player. Good. I, I'd see. speak for everybody, mm. I think, to say delighted he's back playing football, mate. Um, he scored a goal yesterday as well. So Headed? No, penalty. Does he look... He looks and, physically sharp. In terms of going for things aerially, does he look the same and stuff? Like he's still going in yeah, for challenges so and far, stuff? Yeah, so He's wearing he a headgear, but it kind of looks like a, head, a headband. Am I right in saying yeah, rather than like somebody a, a said he might check. be able to uh, head of the ball a lot better, which would be interesting. <laughs> that's a big part of his game. They might have some pair headers. He's brilliant in the air. Um, as well, if you're playing four four two, who's who's been playing up front so far in the friendlies? Then um, Silva and Catrone still hanging around. <laughs> that won't last, will it? <laughs> no. Catrone doesn't. Do best Catrone do doesn't have a price at the moment, and we're not expecting him to stay, are we? No, I'd be surprised if he's still here. Um, the end of August. Who was the lad you had on loan? Jose. Oh, God, Jose. He's not coming back, is he? No, he's going to Turkey, thank God. Okay. He had his profile picture as balls, as balls for too long, and I was getting a bit worried. So you, you <laughs> potentially look, you potentially look, and I realise you've actually, when everyone's back fit, you've got quite a number of players you could probably play as a second striker role, but you do look a little bit light in that area at the moment. Obviously, Jimenez being back is massive. Are we likely to start with Jimenez and Silva then? do you think, when the season starts at the moment? 
if he wants to play that system, yeah. I think Morgan Gibbs wise possibly could drop in as a drop in that position. Or he might use Trial right Ray there. Gibbs White's cheeky, isn't it? Four point five in midfield. I think it's probably got... a bit more interesting than yeah. I imagined this time last year. How much involvement has he had in pre season? Because he finished the season quite well for you as well. Yeah, he did. He, uh, he scored the last match. Come off the bench to score. Muscara assisted him with a good pass over the top. He looks like he's grown up a little bit. Like he wants, he wants it sort of thing. There's always been suspicion with him that off the field there might have been distractions. Do you think that's yeah, behind that's what him now? Yeah, I hope so. I think he's sat because there's always when he was at Swansea, it always seems like him and his missus was like dying to go back to Swansea and he liked tweets about Nuno, like leaving him out and stuff like that. He was very professional. On uh, on our Slack channel on Patreon, Bradley is one of the most active correspondents. Um he's either happy or sad one day or the other, but there's always something in there about his thoughts on walls. Um the Ruben Neves situation seems to be he's going, he's staying, he's going, he's staying. What's what's happening now? I think it's gone a bit quiet. I noticed Wolf's social media when he first come back. We all knew he was there, apparently. But there were, like, tweeting pictures of him, which is weird, because he's, like, the poster boy player. Because today, Traore was back, and then straight away, there's like, oh, Traore's back. But with Neves, they didn't. They waited, like, a few days. Then all of a sudden, we got Neves. Neves pictures, and there's asking him and all that. So I'm going to presume there was something going on. But at the moment, it must have gone on the back burner for them to put their uh, content out. Arsenal have been linked, and so too Manchester United. I think Manchester United might come about if Pogba goes. Yeah. By the sounds of things, so um, I would say Ruben Neves is avoidable. I, I wouldn't say it's st- certainly staying, mate. From what I'm hearing. No, it's a it's a bit murky. It's gone a bit quiet though. I think that Fabrizio Romano said. So unless okay. Man United are targeted, that can come of Inga instead. Is that another area where you're a bit light? Obviously, you've got Matinho yeah, in there yeah. and then Donka. Um, I don't suppose Gibbs White would be ready to go and play in a in a two, in a four four two centrally, and I think probably the same for Tosawi as well. Would that be fair? Yeah, probably. I don't see Gibbs White as that sort of player in the middle. There, it has to be a bit higher up in midfield for me. At the moment, we need we need a ball carrying centre mid. That we need a really strong dominant one because Moutinho's just not got the legs no more. He was quite bad the last friendly, and then Donker last season just lost all that ability to press. Which is, I'm going to be interested to see what this new manager can get a tune out of him because when he first broke into the team, he was that pressing midfielder. He was quite effective. Did the leg work for the other two? Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see if he can do anything for him. It might save a transfer. Who would you like to buy? Is there anyone you got in mind that you've heard linked or anything? Uh, Palinha. I thought, you say, I thought you were going to say Palinha who played for us, mate. It's nearly going to fall off the chair. <laughs> who, who does he play for? Sporting Lisbon. But he sounds like he's a transfer that only happens if Neves goes. Okay. And what's what's the situation with Vitinha? I don't think he's coming back there. No. Really? Because you yeah. rate him, don't you? Yeah, he's a good player. Well, they might regret it. it might be another Goncalves situation that one where we go oh well done balls. you mentioned Podents might be fit for game week one what's what's the, the status on him at the moment he's training with the first team squad he's not had a game yet but he's there so he's probably going to be in the be- at the best of bench I'd probably say okay so I, ho- I hope he's uh, got a grip this season his price is interested again at 5.5 there's every argument to say that that could be a bit higher actually but he didn't he didn't get the jump up um i know he missed a lot of football last year he was all the rage wasn't he roundabouts game week five last year yeah he was, he was there. everyone's got to buy it felt like everyone on twitter was buying podents and I, I don't think a lot happened off it but 5.5 depending on where he plays because I, I think he might end up being the one that that plays through the middle with him and in the longer yeah. term yeah he can do. He's a clever player. He's just a frustrating player. He gets injured a bit too much or he throws tantrums on the pitch. Something doesn't go his way or he gets knocked over because of his size. But they can't. I think some Wolves fans get annoyed by him a lot for that. He just needs to be a bit more robust like Jota was. Because Jota was only like, he wasn't 
tall, wasn't physically that strong, but man, his aggression made up for it. He didn't let nobody bully him. He's probably like me. He's got like angry little man syndrome or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that. He's definitely got that. He's always on Instagram after a match, it's like tweeting about the referee not giving him a foul or something. <laughs> we didn't she tweet? Yeah. Why did he get a free kick? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I really think so is a fair point. I don't I don't actually follow any footballers on Twitter. I don't know am I missing something? I think we're missing Instagram, James. To be honest with you, I think oh, most of them are, um, are more into their Instagram stories and videos than they are on Twitter. Yeah. If you want to I think you're better off following footballers on, on Insta than you are on uh, on Twitter, James. We're just getting too old, you know. Yeah, Possibly. it's always at Insta if it's pardons. Yeah. Yeah. You got two players also out longer term. Johnny again. Yeah, it's really what's, sad. What's, the, what's happened and what's the prognosis on him? I think he's going to miss most of the year again. Fucking hell. Honest. I think yeah. it's a different knee as well, which is even... Which is, is it Crucia miss, again? Yeah. I think so, yeah. It's terrible Painful. luck. And he's one of the best players in the team as well. It's really... If he, was, if he was fit, we wouldn't be talking about eight Nori playing left back, I don't think, mate. Yeah. No, no, no. Be Johnny all the way. And Petro now... October, not too bad. It's not, it, it, it's not it, too good either, though, mate. <laughs> We've got cover for him, though. There's players in his position. Not as good as him. Coming in. But still quality. Talk, talk, talk about this new star, then, Trinkau. Tell me about him. What's what's the story? Where does he play? And what's, the, what's he good at? Carrying the ball, like Troy or Amitta. We seem to have a, a certain type of winger that we like to go for. Kind of like Nuno, I like to go for actually with that Brian Hill. You yeah, it's basically whoever George Mendes has for you, isn't it? Basically, yeah, he's a good ball carrier. He does like a deep, he does like a shot actually from his stats at Barcelona from when he was on the pitch. I think he averages averages about two shots a game per ninety. He gets a, his positions in the box. He takes on decent from what I've saw. He just needs to finish a bit better. Who's he? Who's he comparable to? As a player, would you say in the Premier League? Kind of like, you know, like a Mara style dribbler. Okay. Something like That's that. That's going to get people excited, mate. Yeah. Yeah, he, he averages about, I think it's about nine dribble, progressive dribbles a match. He will, he does get up the pitch fast. So, what is he inverted, place on the right? Yeah, he'll probably play on the right and he'll come inside and Samado should be going around him to make options. Yeah, that's part of the idea. I get that. And so uh, I guess that leads back to a little bit where you mentioned maybe Traore through the middle then. Because I think yeah. that the interesting thing with Traore is we associate him as someone who kind of holds the touchline. But actually, I, I think some of his most dangerous moments for Wolves is when he picks it up in the half spaces and can run straight at people mm. into into central Split, areas. Splitting two centre-halves and going down the middle. They don't know whether to go to him. Attack. If he gets past one of them, you're straight into well, a you know, one you know, situation. You know he's going you know to beat mm. you. Half, half the gig with Traore is just hoping that the final ball or the final shot, he's, he's not good enough. The more central he is, if he can get turned and running at you in central areas, it becomes very difficult. There's at least right on the touchline, you know, if you get a little toe in, it's a, it's a throw in or something and you reset and you start again. The central area, he's got the space then to, to go either way. Um, and I, it's it's interesting. I'm fascinated to see this wide player coming off off the flank and coming into central areas to kind of change the system up into a four two two two, and see how that works. I actually think Traore could be quite good at it. But from what you're saying, are, are we under the assumption that Trinkau is going to start the season? Do you think? I'd imagine so. He's had most of the preseason because Traore has only just come back today, and Podence is still not played a game. Go on, then. Pre- Trinkau and Traore. Go on, Pre- predict as it stands now. A couple of weeks to game week one. Go on, predict the 11. Saar, Samedo, Cody, Mosqueda, Nuri, Traore, Neves, Dendonka, Trinko, Raul, Silva. Okay. I'm trying to think if we're missing out on that. Not, not gives white, you don't think? I don't think so. I'd be surprised. 
but you never know. That's, doing that, well. that's the problem with him. I think he, he's a really interesting one because I think a lot of people like to punt that 4.5s. And actually, when you start digging into all, all the 4.5s that are offering alternatives a little bit who might have a little bit of goal scoring potential in them like Gibbs Wyatt, stuff him. I know he can sit third on the bench, but I also don't want him to be someone that is legitimately a one pointer every every week because eventually he's going to depreciate in value, right? And it's just going to yeah. waste away for you. Um, it's an interesting one to to follow, though. I take it Hoover at four point zero is not ready defensively to put any pressure no. on the fullbacks. No, no, I wouldn't have thought so. He'd probably just like be on the bench most of the time, unless Samado was injured. He probably wouldn't play. Which which Wolves players are in at the moment? Then, mate, go on. I know have you haven't. Got, got, I, have you got I, a draft together? I know you so haven't. Much. I know you haven't got none, Bradley. I've got Nuri on the bench. Okay, that's the scary bit. So we're on episode two, and we're basically filling up our squad here from the correspondence. We've already blown our season because we've got no Manchester City. We've bowled it. <laughs> we've now got Ryan Eight Nori's going in four point five as he said. Should, should we do this? Should well, we have like a well, correspondent team? The problem gonna is we're do... going to have more than fifteen recommendations. Aren't we? <laughs> do you know we always talk about there's that four point five, four or four point five defender that breaks out, like uh, whether it was Lundstrom or Dallas or whatever. I, I don't mind my fifth defender slot because at the moment I've got two 4.5 million defenders in Ailing and Ben White sitting there. <laughs> and I don't mind having a 4.5 as my fifth defender as opposed to a 4 million bench fodder. But I can't see myself having having the balls to play Nori. So it could end up that he does go on a good run between game week four and 14. And I feel like I'm just going to look at him on my bench week in, week out, thinking you're racking up points here, but I don't. I can't bring myself to play you, especially when my other defenders in the likes of Trent, Robbo and Shaw, I'm not dropping any of those guys. Um, So is it almost, uh, it's going to shoot myself in the foot. I'd rather bench players that score points than don't score points. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like even if I get Nori into my squad, I probably won't get a lot of his points because I won't play him. He's got the attacking potential for a 4.5 that you'd want. And that's one thing I do. I, I don't mind taking a particular, a, a, taking a, a, a punt on, on the attacking returns. But when um, someone like if Ben White does make the move to Arsenal, for example, I just think I'd fancy their clean sheets more than I would potentially Norrie's attacking returns as, as an average. So, yeah, I think I'd end up benching him a little more. And, and you've got Luke Ayling sitting there at 4.5 is good value as well. I'd say the one that's really annoying is that all the Villa defenders are five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because you'd have one of them for the first three and then them big eight glory from game week four. But they're all five million. <clears throat> so I don't think you're looking at that. And obviously, I think for most people, most people it feels want to wild card early. So it's either, I think other than eight Nori, it probably means the majority of people are going without balls. I have seen a few people with him and it's, I think it's personally, I think it's a big risk. When yeah. When there are others with good opening start fixtures, and he's probably going to need to ease himself in a little bit. He's right on radar uh, from game week four, and I think we should probably Ollie, Ollie Watkins to him and his same price is so easy. Well, to it, do, isn't exactly it? So... that you said that off camera before we started recording, and went, you know what? If he's if he's got a goal and he looks lively enough in the first three, that kind of move looks exactly on for so many people in game week four. Same price as well. It, it's easy enough to do. It's very unlikely that Jimenez would be a higher price than Watkins by the time we get to game week four, I think. You might need to make that move early during the international break, but it shouldn't be an issue for even those who've got zero in the bank, I shouldn't think. But I think for the majority of us, he's probably watching brief on Wolves, isn't it? New manager, new style, interesting players. But other than maybe eight Norias to bench for the first few games, obviously you could definitely play him in game week two, for example. I think it's mostly an avoid, isn't it? And I guess that's, yeah, that's your view on it as well, Bradley. Yeah, the fixtures don't really uh, don't really uh, offer a start that you'd want to really start anybody. In. Unless you're crazy and want to look do differentials, then roll actually differential from the start. So it's silver even more, so six million. If, uh, if you were wildcarding during that international break, Bradley... And you looked at it and then that 11 fixtures, do you know what? I want to treble up on Wolves. What three do you think? I feel like you're going to say eight, Nori, Jimenez and another. Yeah, just trying to think who the other would be. 
I mean, Trincao would probably put his hand up at six million, depending on how he played in the first three games. Yeah, potentially. Um, Traoré is playing week. Traoré could be very interested, mm. depending on his position he picks up, or it could be Gibbs White. It's interesting because you know. between Neto, Podence, Traoré, all have been reasonable prices in FPL, and have all been kind of small bandwagons at one point or another. None of them ever really fired. But almost it does go back a little bit to what I said at the start. Forget what you know with this team; it really might be different. Um, and you might even be a side that finishes bottom half and scores quite a lot of goals, from what I'm hearing. You might yeah, concede Raul. shitloads. Yeah, Raul could get more consistent service this season because a lot of the time he made the most of what he got, showing he's a great finisher. But he, I don't think he really got that many chances per game mm. that much. This and Nuno, you only really, it's, it's only the second half that you kind of turned up for under Nuno as well. If you start going for games from the beginning under Bruno Large, then obviously you've got an extra 45 minutes there to try and uh, <laughs> score goals and win games, mate. <laughs> I, hope, I hope the second half's a fun at Spurs this year. As I had the opposite <laughs> last year, didn't I? We only play for fucking 20 minutes and don't turn up for the last 70 minutes. And I hope that you've done enough, in the, I hope you've done enough in the first 20 minutes. We, uh, was winning at Wolves last year. Um, how long was he winning at your place? 86 minutes or something last season, winning at your place. Didn't, didn't deserve yeah. nothing. No, that was terrible. Rob. I'm still not over it. Shite game, mate. Shite game. Um, I got a very open mind about it. I, that that fixture run from game week four is unavoidable. Can't stop looking at it. And I think there will be people who wild card in that period. And I, I find it difficult to believe that someone's going to wild card in that period and not want to pick up a, a Wolves player. So I think they're one of the most important teams to watch early in the season. And something like you said, Serge Petrinkow or something, it might suddenly emerge. Yeah, and it looks yeah. a really good price out of nowhere at six million. Because I mean, his ownership must be next to nothing at the moment. I presume not a lot. Not a lot of people no, know no. about him. Have you got any knowledge on his actual goal scoring record previously, Bradley? Who we go. in Trinkau. Scored, I think it was three times last season. He's not really a goal scorer from his stats. He's more of a creative player. He gets right, himself right, into the right, right position. <laughs> Seems a more creative player, like. From his stats for shooting, it just seems like he needs to improve his finishing because the positions he's shot from are good positions. It's like Troy yeah. right, though, his finishing is very poor. Yeah, even when he gets in the position, <laughs> even when he gets in the position, which is rare, his finishing is quite poor. Mm. Fabio Silva could be one at six million. Who knows? Yeah, I feel like again, it's another one where. If he if it looks like in the first three he's going to play every week with Jimenez, you can you could drop down to it if you want to. Yeah. Even even from Tony, mm. say Tony's poor in the first three and people go down that route, you can you can go that way, can't you? Uh, mm. I think Brentford's fixtures get a little bit more difficult from around then as yeah. well. There is a lot of conversation of say the likes of Kane does move to City, for example, and you want Bruno and Salah and so on. It's hard to fit a lot of the the premium players in. You do start looking around for where are the five and a half, six millions. Uh, Podence at five and a half million. I, I would always rather have paid the extra half for Neto last season if they were both available yeah. and both fit. But Neto's not available and Podence at five and a half might be a way of finding the money to upgrade one of your forwards or or what have you when you do want to squeeze in a lot of the premium. So, yeah, I do. I agree with James. I do think a lot of people will start looking at Wolves and and um, see how you start I think, in the first I think at that, that 5.5 midfield value, though, you, you're probably more likely to start with like a Smith Rowe or another rather Dallas, than yeah. to start with Pope. Start. Even, yeah, even Stuart I'd Dallas. I'd rather take Stuart Dallas, to be fair. There's others at that value. What You know, if I look at, say, to be honest, Podence at 5.5 versus, say, Ishmael Asar at 6, I'd, I'd want to pay the extra, I think, for, for yeah. Sarr, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, Podence is not guaranteed to play. No, 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 but I'm talking more game week four onwards, you might think, you know what, he's he's one to look at. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with that, Serge. If he if yeah. he looks like he's gonna play in the team, particularly if he ends up being the one off. I, I actually think if Silver was five point five, I think people would be talking about him. But I, I six just feels a little bit too much at the moment. Yeah. Works his nuts off, doesn't he? Yeah, he's in, he's got a bit bulkier from this from last season. He'll come good. Most of, I mean, like he had 46 shots in the box last season and 21 of his 32 games was off the bench. So it was actually, that's all right. How many goals did he score? Four. He's missed a lot of shots then. 
<laughs> so one in no, ten but... goes in. It doesn't bode well, Brad. It'll get more. It'll it'll, it'll get better. The service you got. He's a, he's a better player towards the end of last season as well. I think the one thing more confident. The, the overriding for me thing for me is there's times where I've watched you. Um, even when you look great with like Jimenez and Jota and playing free at the back and, and Traore coming off that as well. And there was times where the front guys just got so isolated. The way you yeah. want to play now suggests that's not going to happen. And actually, you might be one of the most fun teams to watch in this league this year. What's what's a good season for you, mate? Um, Probably finishing, trying to finish like 10th, something like that. Just, just play better football. Is what we want, really. To be honest, I think. We, I mean, even Conor Cody had an interview recently. He came out and said, like, he felt like a change was needed, and that it's probably the right time to go for Nuno, which surprised me because he's probably like mm. the Nuno, like the Nuno loyalist. So I was quite surprised that he came out with that. So if he thinks that, I'm going to guess the dressing room probably thought similar. Uh, players, it just seems like these days, once they've heard the same voice for three, four years, they want to hear a different voice. Mm-hmm. It's beginning yeah. to feel like that. Like beyond four years, it's just be interesting. You know, people we wouldn't think about now, like like Guardiola and like what Solskjaer coming up to now, Jurgen Klopp. Two and a half. Might Solskjaer be thinking, half. well, two? these guys are. I mean, Solskjaer just signed a new contract at United, but mm. in some of these cases, they might be getting a bit sick of hearing the the same voice. Is why I think. I mean, everybody kind of hates the Chelsea model of changing managers so much, but it works for them, right? Yeah, new manager comes in, or oh, I want to impress the new manager, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, move on. Even still now, no one actually thinks Thomas Tuchel is going to be Chelsea manager in four years, for example. They'll have one beer badgy and he'll sack him and appoint someone else. Is it's how they work, basically. Mm. I think, uh, yeah, if you can get near tenth, that would be a good season for you, Bradley. I, 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 I think there has to be a small concern that you could you could end up in a scrap if you're conceding yeah, too many goals. Yeah. I mean, the, the the best that I heard on on Bruno Large was um, that he was involved in Benfica's best spell in their history and also their worst. Didn't they win? I think in his first season when he introduced Joao Felix into the team, they won thirty two out of thirty four or something. Yeah. And then the season oh, yeah, after, they won two out of eleven games or something. Yeah, I think he. Yeah, I think it was something like that. It took a long step away from management. I think for he's probably looked back at it and thought, "What can I do better?" Because he's not an old manager stuck in his ways by the same of it. I think he's been brought in as well because he's good at developing youth and a lot of our team is full of oh, kids. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. definitely scope for the majority of that squad to improve individually. Yeah, especially I, Fabio Silva and Morgan Gibbs White. Get I'd, the... I'd say all them attacking midfielders have got scope to to improve. Actually, yeah. And the, the, the change of system could well enable it, I think. Wish you well this season, my friend. Just not. Thank hopefully, you. I'll see you in game week two in Wolverhampton. Hopefully, mate. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed yeah. to get a ticket. Well, we we do it. I think yeah, away fans will be allowed then. So uh, we'll we'll come back. To, I mean, um, Ricky Saunders and I were chatting at the uh, the meetup that was last weekend, and uh, ironically, James, we were talking about his first ever meeting with you on a train up to Wolverhampton. It's true. And uh, he said that he's going to save <clears> that story for uh, when we do the Tottenham. Uh, correspondent week podcast so that's one to look he forward can to in a couple of when, days when we scored in the last minute I nearly <laughs> killed the poor bastard <laughs> <laughs> how did we win that day I have no idea <laughs> Bradley thank you so much for joining us and uh, no as James said good luck for the season ahead tell the, the listeners who are new who maybe uh, are less familiar where they can find you on social and what have you uh, you can find me on Twitter uh, at, Brad, at Parker Brad, at Parker underscore Bradley there you go. I and, reckon, and Switch, I know all yeah. the correspondence handles better handles. than they know it. Yeah, quite possibly. You, you know, really better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> James, who have we got coming up third on Correspondent Week? One more on today's schedule is uh, Simon Bibby at FPL underscore footballer. Be talking Newcastle United, and uh, it might move away from FPL quite a bit, yeah. I suspect, because takeover is not happening at Newcastle. But uh, uh, we'll, I thought we'll... takeover week was two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk plenty about Callum Wilson and likes as well. And uh, yeah, they've, they've got a goalkeeper problem we might speak about as well. Indeed. So make sure, uh, listeners, wherever you're listening to the podcast or watching on YouTube, you're subscribed. Uh, there are 20 pods this week, one for every single Premier League club. So you want to be notified as soon as they go out. 
And other than that, stay safe. Chat for now. Thanks, Bradley. Be nice to each other, everyone. Cue music, please, man, child.